Guys, gals, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. It is time for a military surplus overnight adventure. For this trip, I have some really cool gear to share with you all, including the rarest military tent in the world. And I'm excited to use it for the very first time. Gosh, there are deer tracks everywhere. I tell you, this place is alive. Alive with wildlife, that's for sure. Now to start off, we are on a side of Lone Wolf Mountain, which you all do not get to see very often. And that's because I think it's time for a new campsite. I don't know if we will find a new one today, but we are certainly scouting for a new place to set up at. This here would be perfect. It's nice and flat, but it's not what I'm looking for. And because of that, let's go up. That is the perfect tinder made by nature. I guess as part of a bird's nest maybe? I don't know. I will certainly keep this for later. So right up here is a place that I haven't been to in a long time. I shot a bushcraft adventure there many years ago. Let's go check it out. Do you remember the adventure that I filmed here? That was such a good trip. It was so much fun. It was cold, windy. I built this lean-to and I slept right here next to the rock and it snowed. It was awesome. Right over here, I had a fire and there's my fire pit. Do you happen to know what type of nest that is? Comment down below. I will definitely come back to this, but not for this adventure. Hello, forest cow. Remember, if we didn't eat them, they would eat us. That's how it goes. <laughs> Lone Wolf Mountain is 50 miles away from where I live, and it is surrounded by hundreds of acres of mountain farmland. So it's just me and the cows and the bears, the bobcats, the coyotes, the occasional mountain lion, and also occasional wolf. We are now on top of the rock outcropping, and I've always wanted to set up a camp here. My only real concern is this tree right here. It looks pretty dang sturdy. But you never know when a limb might come out of it. And there is quite a bit of deadfall already. Because it's windy today, and it's supposed to get even more so tonight, I will not camp here. In the future, 
I do want to level out a spot and make a campsite. Campsite over here. Have the fire pit right over here. Looking out at the mountains. Oh yeah. Sounds good, don't it? So let's see what it looks like up here. Here's another good spot where a site could be made. Right there, level it out, clean it up. That would definitely work. I was hoping for sites that were a little bit more ready to go. These will require quite a bit of work. And for this trip, it's just a quick in and out. So let's head back. Let's head through the woods. I know exactly where I'm going. Already it's getting windy. It feels good. I don't know. I just don't like the look of that tree at that rock outcropping. If it's going to be windy, I want to be out in the open. And there is no better place than this right here. Oh yeah. This looks good. Yes, it's out in the open. It's exposed. But at least no tree will be falling on me. That's important. Now you all may remember this spot from an overnight adventure many years ago in a big snowstorm. That tree's creaking. I'll tell you what everyone, let's get out of the sun, let's go have lunch. This is going up the backside here at Lone Wolf Mountain and it is steep. Now you may be wondering, Luke, where are you going? I'm going to the shed. I can't count how many messages and emails I've received about the shed. Everybody wants another adventure in the shed. Oh yeah. Ah. <laughs> I love this shed. It is awesome. It definitely needs some work though. That's for sure. That is a project that we will do together this year. We will come back at some point in time begin replacing some of these boards, fixing this up just a little bit. I really like the door for this shed and my plan is to make a clear plastic door that's easy to go in and out of. It's funny. There are little critter tracks everywhere. I think the turkeys have used this shed more than I have. One day I was down the hill from here filming and I hear gobble 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 and I look up and I could see turkeys walking into this thing. <laughs> that was funny. All of my food is right here with this MRE. This is the Menu 18 Beef Patty. Warfighter recommended, Warfighter tested, Warfighter approved. Is that true? <laughs> Warfighters out there, is that true? Usually I go for spaghetti if I can find it. That one's my favorite. What about you all? What do you like? So what we have here is Mexican style macaroni and cheese, which sounds freaking awesome. And we have a grilled seasoned beef patty. I sure hope this thing doesn't taste like that pork patty. Beef patty, pork patty, it doesn't really matter, does it? It's all the same. Uh, we have a beverage tropical punch powder, which actually sounds pretty good. I think I'll make that.
This is a really cool stove here. What you have is the cup, you have a water bottle and the stove. That is the Swiss Military Volcano Ranger stove. Now the reason that I don't have water in the bottle is because these corks are not very good and that thing leaks. Yeah, I think this is just a cup of sugar. Cheers, everyone. It's not bad. Honestly, I figured it would be sweeter. What I'm going with for lunch is the macaroni and cheese. And I'm not going to warm this up. It's already warm. I don't want anything warm. Who? This looks awful. <laughs> Take a look at that. Mexican style macaroni and cheese is different than what I was thinking. All right. That is not good. <laughs> that is not good. In fact, that has to be one of the worst. It's interesting. Like there's a little bit of spice to it. I guess that's the Mexican part, but everything else is just odd. Now, since this is a military surplus overnight trip, we might as well talk military matters here for a second. One of the most interesting stories going around right now in regards to the US military is that if you have tested positive for the coronavirus, you cannot enlist. That's pretty wild, isn't it? There's no comment as to why that is, but there are a few ideas floating around out there. One of the theories floating around is that if you've had the virus, you may have severely damaged lungs or possibly, this is pretty wild, some have claimed that the virus even alters the brain in some way, somewhat like the Spanish flu did. You may not know this, but the Spanish flu left millions of people with all sorts of side effects afterwards. Woodrow Wilson was the president during that time and he contracted the virus. And it was said that he was never the same person again afterwards. Again, that's pretty wild. And this is also wild. Our men and women deserve better than this. They really do. Without a doubt, I'm going to fix this up. And I can't wait, I'm excited. It looks like there was an old calendar nailed to the wall here. Old, old, old. Take a look at the the picture that's on here. This structure's been here for a long time and it will continue to be here for a long time. Before I head down the mountain and set up camp, I wanted to talk about an overnight adventure that's coming up soon. I read through the comments for the overnight adventure that I did in the shed here and everybody liked the fact that I MacGyvered this setup here. So I figured that in the future, we will do a like full on MacGyvered series where I will use random supplies to make shelters and camp out in them, just like I did when I was a kid. I can't wait. That is going to be so much fun. So much fun. My brother and I, we loved doing that when we were younger. Improvised shelters out of just about anything that we can get our hands on. So down here is a road, right? And that road winds up and goes over the mountains. A guy riding a motorcycle just went by, rocking some CCR, Clearance Clearwater Revival. <laughs> that was awesome, man. I love some CCR. Don't go out tonight. It's bound to take your life. Or maybe being out underneath this rock will.
There we go. So that there is plenty hot for me. Plenty hot. I was wrong about this MRE. It does not have coffee. It has tea, a wipe, some salt, some gum. I think that's it. Luckily, I have my own Folgers Nasty. This stuff has basically been outlawed with militaries all around the world. It makes their soldiers too violent. So here we go. Cheers, everyone. Cheers to all the men and women who have served. That should be illegal. It's so good. Ah, that is good. It really is. Honestly, this Folgers, it's not too bad. <laughs> When it comes to bushcraft, I've talked about this many times previously, but it takes so much time. And this old shelter is a great example of that. When I came out for that trip, I spent hours and hours and hours building this. Most of my time with that adventure was spent out in the forest just gathering all of this wood to build this wall. So I built this wall, I put some debris in it, and it protected me from the cold, from the wind, and from the snow. I remember there was a comment. One person said that that was the worst bushcraft shelter that they've ever seen. But the thing is, that's real bushcraft right there. That's a real shelter. That's not made with a chainsaw. That's not made over the course of days. That's what you can expect when you're building something by hand. It takes that much time. And as the old saying goes, if it's pretty, it's bullshit. It's true. That is an old survival and bushcraft saying. And it is very accurate. Talking about the comments for that previous bushcraft adventure, one person asked me why I didn't have a fire inside of my shelter. I wonder if that person's still alive. Because that is a bad idea. A debris shelter that is composed of just dry, <laughs> ready to burn sticks, twigs, and leaves, it's not a good idea. The coffee is almost done, then it will be time to head off the mountain and we'll set up camp. I think you guys and gals will like this tent. It is super sweet. It's very unique. It's a little bit weird, but it's awesome. This is, without a doubt, one wild tent, but it is not practical for anything outside of military use. And you will see why when I get it set up.
something just came to me years ago when I first bought this property I was setting up the camp here it was getting late into the afternoon and like I hear this noise right so I'm kind of looking around and then like right over my head right over these trees here come turkeys just flying down like right over my head <laughs> that was pretty cool So this is my setup. The tent is the Nemo Coda 1.5 SE. This is part of Nemo's Shield Edition line of tents that are made for the United States military, or were made. I'm not really sure. Nemo has not updated their Shield line in a long time, so I don't know if they're still doing that or not. These tents are used by the Special Forces to this day. On average, maybe two tents a year will go on sale on eBay, and they can range all the way up to over 2,000 bucks. One recently sold on eBay, I think for almost a thousand dollars. But uh, yeah, these things are very, very rare. And also very unique. You have the front vestibule, you have the side door, and another side door. And you also have a side vestibule. This is a tunnel tent, and I'm excited to sleep in this. My question is, how bad is the condensation going to be? I don't know. I have no idea. We are going to find out together. I almost forgot I was going to talk about my knife. This is a custom BK2, Becker BK2, that I made. What do you all think about this? One of the very first videos on my channel was doing this project, a custom BK2 knife. And it still looks incredibly good. It does. And it hasn't rusted a bit. I think what we should do is go up to the top and let's see how windy it is up there. Let's see if we could find a place to have a fire tonight. I really want one, but I don't know if it's possible. So far, I have not been able to find a good place to shelter and have a fire. I don't think there is such a place here. That wind is just circulating every which way. If this was a bushcraft adventure, there is something I could do. But I will save that for a future episode. Hi, Didi. How are you doing, sweet girl? Sure do miss you. Unfortunately, I think it's too windy to have a fire tonight. What a shame. That's okay, because I think the weather is going to be very interesting. You might be able to see behind me, there is a black wall of clouds coming this direction. And I just looked at the radar, and there is moisture heading this way. So, rain, maybe some snow later on tonight. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I want. The temperatures now are in the 40s. I'd say probably around 47 degrees, something like that. Starting to feel pretty good.
It is time for some crackers, everyone. And really, they're more like the uh, pretzel cheese things. What do they call those? Jumbos or something? Combos. Combos, that's it. Do not overfill. That's easier said than done. <laughs> I just about always overfill. Let's warm up this grilled seasoned beef patty. And the cheese spread as well. No, this is barbecue sauce. Where's the cheese spread? I'm going full on nasty town. All right, cheese spread, hell. Let's warm up the barbecue sauce too. All of a sudden, the wind has calmed. I don't know why, but I'm thankful. So this is definitely warming up now. And because the heater is rocking and rolling. Oh yeah. I am going to insert the barbecue sauce on the other side of the heater and also the cheese spread. Why? Why not? All right, and now we wait. Let me tell you, everyone, this stuff is good. And when I say that, I mean not really, so. So that warmed up quite a bit. <laughs> Why won't you come out? Oh, it's pouring juice everywhere. Well, that made a mess now, didn't it? Oh, that cheese. <laughs> Warming it up did actually help somewhat. It's better than it usually is. Let's start with this, shall we? I probably should have tried this before I poured it on there. The barbecue sauce is actually pretty good. But, uh, bon appetit, here we go. It's not bad. It tastes like Spam. More than anything. Without a doubt, this is better than that Mexican macaroni and cheese or whatever it was. That was pretty gross. This is okay. It was maybe two years ago, around this time, May, April. My brother and I, we went out for a night hike. And that night, it was like 40 degrees or something or other. And as we got started, we noticed that the sky was flashing. There was a thunderstorm somewhere far off, right? We make it about halfway on the trail that we're hiking. And all of a sudden, lightning, thunder, strong winds, and it starts snowing on us. It was absolutely incredible. Dropped about an inch of snow in the matter of just minutes. Thunder snow, it rock and rolled. It was very, very cool. So that's the other piece of bread. I don't know if I can get that down or not. <laughs> I mean, it's not the worst thing ever. It's just, it's not very good. I'm going to finish this up and I'll bring you all back when it's time for a fire. I have some interesting things to discuss with you all concerning the US military and we'll do that around the fire.
living the dream now, folks. Nice warm fire. I use that board to block the wind. This rock is a gigantic reflector wall. <laughs> also, I have all the firewood I could possibly need. There's firewood everywhere, and it's all bone dry, too. Talking about the United States military, I read an interesting article the other day, and it was talking about weight and the amount of gear that soldiers carry and the impacts because of it. The article was talking about the extremely high rate of injury when it comes to our soldiers. They're carrying you know, sometimes 100 pounds, maybe even more than that, and most of that weight is ammo. It's interesting, over the last 10 years or so, the United States government, the military, has shifted its focus from like heavy, heavy gear to gear that is quite a bit lighter in weight. And you can see that with the tents and their designs. The previous generation tents, eight pounds, 10 pounds, but the newer generation, you're talking about four pounds, five pounds, still military spec, still heavy duty, but yet more civilian than ever before. And that is a very wise decision on their part. The heaviest element inside of a soldier's pack is ammo, as I mentioned before. So the United States government is addressing this. And right now, and going into the future, they will be testing out different types of casing, namely plastics and polymers. And ultimately, the goal is to get away from brass. If you like to shoot like I do, then you know what I'm talking about when it comes to ammo weight. It's unbelievably heavy. 223, 308, and so on. It adds up fast. It's nice when the firewood is so dry that you could basically burn one stick at a time once you have a good bed of embers going. That's pretty much how this is, one stick at a time. I can control the heat, I can control the smoke. I'm not getting the rock wall too hot. Also, I'm not getting too hot. I have a nice breeze coming in, it's cool. And also, it's not insanely windy either right now, which is freaking awesome. <laughs> I don't know how I got so lucky, but I did somehow. We'll see if it gets windy later on tonight though. All right, here we go. Time to climb inside my coffin. <laughs> That's what it feels like. It feels like a coffin in here. This is such a small tent. Ah, it's a beautiful night. It must be the calm before the storm because it's absolutely still now. There's not even a, a slight breeze. So I'm inside of the tent now, ready to call it a night. I have the vent over here on this side open, and I have the vent on this side open. So I have some good airflow here. All in all, very comfortable. Uh, let's see, going over some gear, I am on the Thermares Marpad, United States Marine Corps. My sleeping bag is the United States Marine Corps three season sleeping bag, which is good down to 20 degrees. And with a poncho liner, you can push it to five degrees inside of the Nemo Coda. But let's see, I do have some movies to watch. I have the excellent Band of Brothers, which is just fantastic. It really is awesome. If you haven't seen it, it's worth a purchase. Uh, I believe that's an HBO thing, but it is excellent. I also have Universal Soldier, which I've seen that movie so many times. It's kind of like a guilty pleasure movie. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It could have been so good, 
But like, there's like goofy elements. They try to make it a little slapstick. And some of the acting is just like awful. Super terrible. I'd like to go back and re-edit that movie and make it better. I could make it much better. Thank you all for joining me for this trip. I am going to kick back, watch a movie. I will see you all in the morning. Or if something happens, I will bring you all back. So, good night for now. Bye. It's update time, everyone. It's a little bit after midnight. And it is raining. Or snowing. It's doing something outside. Uh, so far, not very windy. But it sounds like it's coming in. You can hear high-level winds already. Yeah. It's been a good night. I've been watching Band of Brothers, and it is awesome. It's been a long time since I've watched it. It's fantastic. But um, I just sealed up the tent. Let's see how it does with condensation. Wish me luck. <laughs> good night, everyone. Good morning, everyone. It is 5.30, and I wanted to give you all an update of what it's like to be inside of this tent. It is absolutely unreal how much water is inside of this thing. The tent performed so good until it started raining and I had to seal it up, and the amount of water that's in here is scary. It is scary. The sleeping bag is wet. Everything's wet. Um... Yeah, it's unreal, to be honest. Um, there's actual pools of water here. Hopefully you guys can see all of that moisture. The water's just dripping right now. It really is. This is, in my opinion, what you would call amazingly bad. So, my plan was make coffee inside the tent and all that stuff. Forget that. Everything here is sopping wet. As soon as I can get out, I will get out. All right, it is definitely cold this morning. It's not quite freezing, but it's in the ballpark. It's windy, and it is insanely wet in here. Insanely wet. There's just rivers of water. Uh, since this morning, and we last talked, I opened up some of these vents since it doesn't look like it's going to rain. And um, that has helped, but to me it's amazing how much condensation formed over the course of just a few hours, because I probably didn't turn in until after, well, I think it was almost one o'clock, and then, um, and it stopped raining by four, three, four, something like that. By 5.30, everything in here was absolutely soaked. <laughs> it's funny, that's what I expected to happen with this tent. I have to say though, with both of these vents opened up, you can lay here and just stare out and see the stars. And it is awesome. When it's not raining, this is a great tent, but when it is, oh man. <laughs> Blow out. Mm. 
Okay. Now we're playing with power. <laughs> It is a windy morning, but luckily I'm somewhat sheltered here. Ever so often there will be a rogue <laughs> breeze that comes through, but it's not too bad. Coffee this morning is Folgers, and I'm going to make it a double shot. Living on the edge every day. Breakfast is nothing. We had the MRE and we ate everything in it yesterday. I have my volcano stove going. Warming up my hands, some hot coffee, good friends. It's a great way to wrap up this adventure. Speaking of which, the best piece of gear for this trip has been this volcano stove. It is absolutely awesome. I do have a review on this if you're interested. It is very, very fast, very efficient. The water bottle, again, isn't all that great because of this cork. Um, but it would make a good vessel for like oatmeal or rice or something like that for your bushcraft trips. You could see how efficiently this thing burns. No smoke as long as you're burning dry wood. Before I end this adventure, we might as well talk about my daughter who is in the Navy and what is the latest with her. Her deployment was delayed because of the coronavirus, but it is now back on. Maddie, I love you very much. Be safe on your adventure. I cannot wait for you to come home. And with that being said, everyone, I'm going to say goodbye. Strength and honor to you all. If you've liked this video, please hit the like button. It does help. Subscribe, of course. If you want to support a channel that is 100% agenda free, you can do so through Patreon. Here at the channel, you will find no affiliate links, no store, I don't sell anything, I don't work with other companies to sell products, nothing like that. I do my best to put up one adventure every single week, especially during the coronavirus outbreak. While everyone is hunkering down, I will be on the trail sharing adventures with you all. Bye everybody. Be safe out there.